Hey Mike, um, obviously that was sudden death game. Have you ever have you ever coached a sudden death basketball game before? I'm not sure that I have. So we, you know what, we had a lot of experiences in that game and a lot of situations that were that were really good. You know, we came into this week or two weeks as we've gone through camp and we wanted to learn we wanted to get better we wanted to have experience in these things and we we got it today so I thought that was valuable time for our young players to go through those situations and and learn and uh, you got Isaiah Todd back today um, he played 26 minutes uh, what did you what did you see from him and where did you kind of see I guess you know need for improvement I know he hadn't picked up a basketball in like a week or something like that well, it's actually been longer than that. So I think, you know, as we look at that, I think it was it was really good. I thought he had some really good turns in the first half. We were watching his just his energy level just to make sure because he hasn't worked out in in a number of days. And so it's kind of a tough situation, but he was ready to play. He was excited. He showed up, uh, loved the athleticism, loved the aggressiveness that he was doing. Um, so, you know, you give him a couple of practices now and we get to play again. Uh, this is going to be a great experience for him to take advantage of. Thank you. Christos. Hello, coach. Hope you're doing well. Yes. Speaking about uh, Corey Gispert, what impressed you most about his progress through the games in the team? And he, he made one big shot in the last seconds of the regular, uh, regular game. How, how evaluate his presence so far? In the, in Las Vegas, yeah, I think I think he's he's really progressing. We know he's a great shooter. Everybody you know in the world knows that he's a great shooter. And you know some of the plays that he's making, just by what he's seen, and he knows he's drawn a lot of attention. Uh, he made some really heady plays out there today and set up scores for other people. So very impressive with just how he's seeing the game, how he's taking the game. Uh, obviously everybody, you know, they're trying to keep him from getting shots. Um, and he's, he's playing well, you know, he's doing a lot of things out there. And like I said, we know, we know he's a great shooter. So, you know, this gives him an opportunity to play, you know, against some NBA players and get a good feel for it on the other things as well. Thank you very much. Any more zoom questions for coach? Coach. Um, from Colombia, sí, Gilfredo Franco, CTV Barranquilla. Um, how do you find uh, the play um, today, Jaime Chanique? He played very well. He played very well. Obviously, we knew coming into the game, Brooklyn has been, I think, the second best offensive rebounding team in this tournament so far in the games out here in Vegas. So we knew that was going to be a real challenge. Um, you know, he was called on. He immediately impacted the first half of the game with his rebounding. His defense was good. And he, he was a presence as a roller and with some post-up situations when we got to some switches. So I think he played very well. thought his minutes were, were very effective and very efficient. All right. Thanks, Coach, for the Zoom portion. Well, I, these are learning moments. You know, these are learning moments. I think as much as anything, when we set our film and we can go through some of these situations, they went through it in real time and experienced what it looked like. Now they can go back and look at it when we can slow it down and see the plays. The next time he's in this situation, he's going to know exactly what he wants him to do, what he wants to do. So I think this is, these are great opportunities for us to learn and, and to experience these things. The fact that, you know, there's limited timeouts, the game doesn't stop that much. Um, the guys have to figure a lot of things out on the fly. We can always go back and teach and watch the film, but for them to really play off their instincts and play off the recognition of what they're seeing on the floor, great value. I think we've taken a step. I think, um, I think we did a lot of things well today. I thought, you know, we, we played, we practiced, we came back today, you know, brought Isaiah Todd in, just, you know, has been out for, hasn't played. And, um, you know, I think, I think we uh, made some strides today. So we've got, you know, some practice time here. We'll use the practice time and we'll come back and we want to clean those things up again. You know, 
I think the biggest thing, how can we put our good possessions together? How can we minimize if, if we're in a bad stretch? You know, we had really the, the part in the fourth quarter, we had a couple turnovers and gave up a couple putbacks. Uh, that, that was really the extended stretch of the game where we couldn't quite break it and get out of it quick enough. So those are the things I think now we look at and we understand the game and understand what we need to do and, and make those plays quicker. So it's, a, it's almost an advantage for the players that we're not stopping it and telling them what to do all the time. They have to figure some of these things out. Now we're in these situations again, they're, they're going to be a lot more comfortable and their recognition is going to be a lot different. Yeah. Right. He's a great shooter. He's a great shooter. So he's he's getting a chance to navigate, you know, through the NBA games and he's getting a lot of minutes. Um, he's he's, you know, getting the experience on both sides of the ball. But he just made so many plays today that were just smart plays that are going to help other people. And uh, we know he's a shot maker. We know that's going to happen. And that's, you know, we just want to make sure he keeps getting good shots. We're trying to help him. But he is working his way through this and doing a really good job. Mm -hmm. Repeat the last part for me. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Had we been stopping it with a lot of timeouts at the end, if, if each team had two timeouts left and I use my two and they use their two and we were setting everything up and telling them what to do, that would be experience. But the fact is, is what was happening on the floor is what they saw. So they made decisions based on their recognition. And as young players, the longer they play, their recognition becomes sharper and faster. They see it developing quicker. So the next time they see a similar situation, the next time they're in a situation, they're going to be a lot more prepared for it. And it's, it's you know, that's you talk about where the game gets a little bit easier because you're seeing things. This is a great opportunity for us to do that. Buenas noches, Jaime. Saluda a Gilfredo Franco. ¿Cómo te va? <ríe> Un abrazo. Hey, tú, ¿Cómo vas? Bien, bien, bien. Bueno, mi pregunta es en español y si puedes responderla también a, lo, a la gente en Estados Unidos, pues en inglés. Es cómo te sentiste el día de hoy, más minutos, más oportunidades y también liderando la ofensiva del equipo Washington Wizards, ¿no? Bueno, primeramente tengo que darle gracias a Dios, gracias a Dios por las oportunidades que me ha dado, gracias por ponerme en el lugar donde estoy. Creo que ha sido bastante sacrificio y, y, y lo más importante es siempre estar listo para cualquier cosa que venga. Uh, además de eso, uno tiene que crear el espacio y saber que el, el tiempo es perfecto y, y solamente seguir creyendo y, y no desaprovechar las oportunidades que te dan. Creo que hoy aproveché bastante las oportunidades. Entonces, nada, feliz y contento del resultado, pero vamos, vamos por más. Es lo más importante. Uh, I think I first of all, I have, I have to thank God for everything that he put on my way. Uh, I've been blessed by him all through all my time here. I've just been waiting for the right opportunity and the right situation for me. So I'm just blessed, man. I'm just taking advantage of this situation, this experience. So I'm really happy with it. Uh, obviously, at the same time, I have to thank God and thank the people in Colombia and shout out to my people in Colombia to say that belief, belief in your dreams, belief in all the stuff you're doing. Eh, cuando tienes los sueños, cuando tienes las ganas, sigue luchando por tus sueños porque yo solo no represento Colombia, solamente a Sudamérica. I just only no represent Colombia, South America. Shout out to all the people who, who's chasing their dreams, so keep believing. Leonardo. Jaime, buenas tardes. Te saludo a Leonardo Torres desde Perú. Fel eh, felicitaciones por esta performance que has tenido hoy. Dos consultas. La primera, ¿qué esperas de esta liga de verano? ¿Cuál es tu objetivo? Y la segunda, ¿qué crees que debes mejorar? Muchas gracias. Uh, primeramente, eh, 
yo todo lo dejo en manos de Dios. Mis expectativas obviamente son grandes, pero creo que eh, todo viene a, a, al, al momento ideal. Eh, todo, uno tiene que ser paciente. Entonces, lo que salga de aquí será grandioso, para, no solo para mí, sino para mi familia y para todas las personas en, que, que me apoyan hasta este, hasta este punto. Y hay siempre, hay siempre espacio para seguir mejorando en el camino. Esto es el, apenas el principio de mi carrera. Todavía tengo 24 años y sé que puedo mejorar mucho más. Uh, my expectation for this situation is to embrace all, every opportunity, enjoy, the spirit, enjoy the, this experience. This is something new for me that I couldn't have last year because of COVID. And I just take an advantage of it. Uh, what happens after this, it will be a bless. And then uh, it, it, it's only God will know what will happen uh, for me and for my family, but I just enjoying this time. And there is always room for improvement. So uh, I was just gonna keep working, keep working hard and then and keep trying to open up uh, everything that, that could happen in the, in the future. Alan. Hola Jaime, es Alan Silva desde Costa Rica para presentar que bueno, ojalá para nosotros no solo representa a Sudamérica, a toda Latinoamérica y todos nos enorgullece verlo ahí. Hoy usted dominó en el, en el poste bajo y tuvo, tuvo una gran cantidad de puntos en el poste bajo. ¿Qué otros aspectos de su juego quiere demostrar que usted tiene como fortalezas? Yo creo que todo es acerca del tiempo. Uh, obviamente las oportunidades estaban hoy en el, en el poste bajo, pero no tengo ningún problema en cualquier momento en abrirme al perímetro y y, y demostrar lo, todo lo que he entrenado y ampliar mi juego. Uh, obviamente, the advantage for me today was in the low post, and I take full advantage of that. So, but it's always opportunity to show off the, my 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 uh, playing outside. And but today just was one of those days where you dominating and then uh, you taking advantage of those things. Today was your first day in a Wizards uniform, at least on the floor. Uh, how did it feel? Um, I know you haven't played in a little bit. So, uh, what was just kind of going through your emotions when you stepped on the floor? Um, it was a lot of fun, man. I had fun. I was telling coach, you know, it was a shame my, my shot didn't fall, but you know, what do you expect? You've been in the, the hotel room for a week, no practice. First time getting on the floor with these guys. Um, it was a lot of fun, man. It went smoother than I actually thought it would, you know, could have came away with a win. Um, but you know, we got another game. And, uh, you know, you played 26 minutes. So physically you mentioned sitting in a hotel room. How do you feel right now? Um, I feel energetic. I feel pumped, man. Most of that was adrenaline <laughs> just from being excited to play basketball again. And, you know, we haven't played since the bubble, only played right. 15 games there. Um, so, yeah. And you mentioned, you know, your shots not falling, but, it, you know, you haven't played basketball. You haven't played a real basketball game in a couple of months. I mean, is that just, you know, how do you, how long do you expect that to take? You know, it's just kind of getting back into the rhythm of things as, especially as this year kind of ramps up. Oh, not long at all. Not right. long at all. You know, um, I had been training over these last couple months, even, you know, right after the bubble. It was just, you know, when we got here, I couldn't practice or, you know, even pick up a ball for about a week. Um, so, you know, that, you know, now that I'm back and I'll be able to practice and get shots up and, you know, do my regular routine, everything should be back to normal. Thanks, Isaiah. Thanks. Thanks, Isaiah. That's uh, it for the Zoom portion. My man. You still need this? Okay. Um, just continue to do the same things that I've been doing and building um, on, on myself, you know, on and off the court. Uh, probably, you know, increasing my rebound rate, um, just running the floor, bringing energy, being that spacer, um, and coming in and being the leader that I can be. Yeah, it was just pretty much, I mean, what you saw was just all stuff that I had learned last year. Um, I kind of just applied it um, to the general uh, offense of what we were doing and, you know, the spacing on defense and everything. It was just kind of just uh, second nature of what I learned in the G League with Team Ignite. Um, we did a little walkthrough this morning, so I kind of, uh, you know, took from that as well. I'm sorry, I can't really hear you. Um, 
I mean, it's not it's not really a big change. Uh, the NBA game um, from the G League game is kind of similar. You know, the G League is where you go to get better to work on that NBA game, work on that dance. Um, now that I'm moving up, I feel well prepared. Even though it was 15 games, we trained gruesomely uh, over those couple months. You know, we were with Team Ignite. Um, and those vets, you know, make sure we were well prepared. So now coming to this, I think it's a smoother transition um, than it would have been, you know, if I say I had to go to college. Um, but, you know, we never know. Yep, definitely. Um, winning games. I think that's the biggest thing. We're going to win games. Um, and we're going to execute what coaches, uh, what coaches' plan is. And we're going to go out there. We're going to have fun. And I think, you know, we focus on those three things. Um, for the rest of this summer league, you know, we'll be successful. Darren? Yeah, go ahead, Zach. Hey, yeah, sure. Thanks. Um, Isaiah, um, I'm wondering, how did you keep up with your ball handling and conditioning during the quarantine? Were you able to do anything in the hotel room? Um, the most I got to do during that, you know, week of quarantine was uh, we did a morning workout. Well, I did a morning workout um, every day with one of the coaches on Zoom. Um, and that was pretty much all we could really do. Some push-ups, some sit-ups, uh, anything that really got me moving um, and working on that conditioning, as you can see. Yeah. 